I will today talk about something that um, an applied AI project that you can actually even uh, use in your own house or uh, from your phone as well, and what kind of methods we can use and what were the things that I faced, uh, because we have so many um, resources and why did I decide to choose the ones that I used. Um, but before we start, uh, hello, I'm Sena. Uh, I graduated from electronic engineering recently, and now I'm pursuing my master's degree in uh, AI here in Prague. Um, and I'm currently working as a data and analytics engineer at SAP since one year. Um, so today the plan is to first uh, introduce, introduce you the problem statement, why did we do develop this project, and what kind of a pipeline we can overlook before we even start it, what kind of models we can uh, use in order to solve this, and uh, what will be the final look, and I have very funny uh, feedback from people in my life and I made them use it and they gave me some funny feedback and I will be sharing them with you as well. Um, so the question, this is why you're here to listen exactly this, what are we eating today? And uh, this is something that, like I've never seen another question that made two sane person go crazy even though they had like patience for each other, they have love for each other. This is something that there is always one person that says like, oh, I'm done for anything. And then you say, okay, let's order pizza then. And they're like, actually, I'm cutting carbs. Okay, that's not that bad, uh, understandable. And then you say like, let's order a bowl. They're like, I want to feel energized today, which you can get energized from vegetables as well, but okay, let's order Indian then. And they're like, actually, I have to work tonight, so I don't want to eat something that's heavy, which I don't think is a heavy food, but anyways, they are just, they actually had a decision, but they're like, I'm down for anything. So I don't like this question for this reason. And um, later, even when I'm alone, like I do not have any problems with this, but again, like why exactly this project? This this previous question, we can actually just create something with Python that's randomly going to give you a recipe for each day, right? Why do we need AI for this? Uh, not exactly solely for this question, but these other questions were also in my mind, uh, which is something that I do, shopping without a meal plan, um, and trying to teach myself how to cook without having a plan. Uh, so usually I don't go to the market and just get a baguette and leave. Like I get everything for month, it's for a month and I go home, I do not finish any of it. And this is just like a damage for my budget and I don't want to waste food as well. So this gives me a sense, an idea that, okay, then my fridge is the main place that directs me to what I'm going to eat. Like the, that's quite obvious, but <laughs> I had to think about it. Uh, so, and cooking itself is something, again, I wanted to streamline because it's a fundamental part of life, regardless the gender. I think it's a flex to be able to say, like, I like cooking this and I'm really good at this, I can do this for you or something. Um, it's just a nice thing to learn, solely to feed yourself enough, that's something to learn. And that's something you know that you will do every day, every day. like you will eat every day. So. If I sold the project to you, uh, areas that we should be tracking, I think is deciding to buy mindfully. And uh, then if I'm going to buy mindfully, I have to track what I have in my fridge. And I can do that by actually building a fridge project and checking the list of what I have in the fridge. Actually, there is some smart fridges that already do this for you, but they are so expensive for literally no reason because you can detect whatever you have in your fridge and later there could be a second part which is going to recommend you what you're going to eat with the ingredient list and there could be some edge cases where you have to know um, what, what amount of ingredients are matching the recipes because we want to use whatever we have as the resource. So understanding the data pipeline. Usually when I'm given a ticket, I try to understand what is the input, what is the output, and if I, I believe that if I understand it correctly, I will be able to build the model itself too. Uh, 
And the current situation, I want to track what I have. Okay, so I can have the image of the fridge, I can do it live stream, or I can just uh, give the image to the picture to the model as well. And of course it will be vectorized, and I will expect a list. Or based on the case, I can accept, expect a set as well. If I'm going to say like only use whatever you have, not the amount of what I have. And the second part of the project is the recommendation of the recipe, uh, which gets a list, ingredient list, later suggests you to recipe or recipes based on your preference, we can always modify the project. However, that's not that simple, even in the data pipeline. I can ask you some questions like, uh, what kind of a data set you're going to have? There is so many food data sets, uh, and you can even, you can merge them if that's not enough for you, because there is some data sets that only contain fruits, some only contain vegetables. So we can merge them. And uh, another thing, you can simulate a data set for yourself. Uh, simulation applications are so easy to simulate this kind, of, this kind of items. And then you can augment whatever you simulated. The second part, the recommendation, uh, are we going to scrape recipes from the internet? Well, scraping is not something I'm very fond of. Like, I don't like it that much because it can go bad very easily. So I searched for some data sets uh, that already had like the ingredient list and then the recipe as the column. So that was very easy. And uh, I had to tokenize them. Again, I can augment them as my preference. However, when I switched to model pipeline, I changed some, some of these decisions. Uh, because as a model pipeline, like I introduced this idea in the interviews, I talked about this to my tech friends, non-tech friends, and they are trying to understand. So the model is actually an object detection in the fridge. It's not complex, but you have to be mindful that it will be multi-object detection. You cannot just give everything and it will take too much time. And I think people would prefer it to be a real time or something, but during real time, there is some problems in object detection, which if you shake it or something, the camera might cause problems, which will result in bad detections. So this kind of decisions are also have to be made in model pipeline. And the second model, it's actually much more complex than the detection. Uh, like you can do simple filtering without AI. You can say like, I have this list, these ingredients, just match them. And only give me the recipes that match this. Or you can use something with AI that's going to try to group them, which is basically uh, key and none, like this kind of clustering algorithms. But that's not enough. Uh, even in the object detection, uh, you can use like Instead of using CNNs, you can fantasize, you can say like, I will use vision transformers, I will do post-processing, I will do fine tuning for edge cases. And even in here, recommendation, uh, you can say like, I will do uh, this TFID vectorization and um, distance matching algorithms, I will use them. That's not enough, uh, you can say, I will do content-based filtering, which is something specifically a recommendation case. That's not enough. I will use matrix vectorization. I will use autoencoders, transformers. All of them are capable to do this at this age of technology. And uh, you can even create hybrid models that are using multiple ones of this. And that's not enough. Um, the other thing is user can input stupid things. <laughs> uh, that's no offense. We are, I'm, I'm a user too, and I and input stupid things. Uh, how to evaluate what are going to be my edge cases? Am I going to use TensorFlow, PyTorch? Am I going to create my own data set or not? Is it going to be auto-labeling, or am I going to waste my life by labeling? Am I going to host a database, or uh, am I going to keep track of what I already uh, detected in one day, or am I going to just do not keep them and have to take the picture every time? These kind of questions are really important because they actually matter <laughs> before you start, especially as a beginner. You have to be certain about what you're doing, like this is what I'm trying to do, these are my steps, and uh, later try to understand the tech stack. Um, but 
It's not this complex too, because I can assure you this project could be done in one hour as well. And I will try to say that you started this project to not decide to what you are going to eat and what are you supposed to do now with all of these? Well, decide. Um, but that's okay, that's fine. I'm here to guide you. Let's agree on a baseline. We can say like, uh, we will understand the fridge content. That's enough, let's keep it that simple. I just want a list of ingredients that I have. I will filter the fringe content and give it to the recipe model. But this, this like giving, I need a GUI, then like a user interface. Then I said like, uh, for example, I'm someone that learned programming by electronic engineering. So with C and microcontrollers, I later become like an AI engineer. So I learned Python, but I never had to touch web. Like I never had to make an API call or learn what is an endpoint. So I'm like, I will, uh, tailor this project for myself and teach myself how to use Streamlit, uh, which is something that allows you to basically showcase your data science project without having to learn so much about API calls and buttons and stuff. Last part is I decided that we will not build a recommendation model from scratch. We're not going to train a transformer from scratch because uh, this is not an AI conference, that's why. <laughs> or we can just simply build it, but not for this conference. So I will just use OpenAI's API to reach to their models, and I decided to use GPT 3.5. And let's start with the object detection. Again, we can use any model. Um, I said like, I use the pre-trained model because faster CNN is very good at accuracy, and uh, it has very high detection accuracy. And since the fridge, I'm assuming, won't be that easy for me, it's usually packed in my house, so I need to really understand what are the borders of my items and uh, is there like overlapping? And this model uh, is combined with ResNet and ResNet is good at solving that kind of situations. So this is why I choose it. Um, and the object detection. To start, I hope you can see, um, I said like just, get uh, the image itself. So we have like a, with Streamlit, you can easily do that, like an input area, and uh, we will give our picture in here. But what, what it outputs is something I didn't want it to use, uh, show to the users. So it's actually giving it like this, predicted probabilities, it's giving labels, and like there is zero, one, bottle, orange. Why is it doing that? Well, actually that's the output of an object detection model most of the times, but I don't want to, show that like that to my user. So I transformed it to look like this. Apple refrigerator weighs, exactly that's what it detected by the way. Even detection is, <laughs> I underestimated it, but it can go wrong. So the uh, second part is it's giving you the scores as well. I thought that the user doesn't have to know that because we have the instinct to know that it's not a weighs in the fridge. It was just a water bottle. Um, so, but these scores are important for you as the developer, the AI developer, because whatever you choose as a threshold is going to be the main fact that the model is uh, certain that it can, it's that right thing that it detected. Later, um, I, c I wanted to handle some edge cases, like for example, refrigerator amount. Before trying to better the object detection model, let's uh, get some help from the user. So the refrigerator amount is zero. <laughs> so I said like, okay, the user can decide like how many amounts of carrot it see, how many amounts of apple, because maybe that will play a part on what we're going to cook. And I don't want to cook something, uh, if I have like uh, 16 eggs, maybe it's better to try to cook something with an egg instead of something that I have only one. Um, so this is why I, I text, uh, put these in here, which takes the user input. But on the top of that, it says like the model itself detected only five carrots and stuff. By the way, this is not only for detection. This could be used for your preference as well. For example, you know that the model is going to give you something with an apple, but you do not want to eat apple that day. Okay, then just select it zero. And it's, it's actually, now that I learn how to interact with user, how to make interfaces like that, it's actually better to make the user work than me. Uh, <laughs> so 
I later added the last part before I sent the API call to OpenAI. Open um, I said, is this all? For example, even if the model didn't detect that something, it could be something that you don't store everything in your fridge. So you can say like, I want to eat something with onions and you can just add it with the amount and you can just update the ingredients and later click this button and get recipe recommendations. So the OpenAI API, it's actually so interested. Nowadays, like I've been interviewing since two, three years, solely because I like interviewing. <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's a great chance to learn about what I have to know. And in the interviews, they used to ask me like, what is accuracy, uh, explain me what is AlexNet, what is YOLO, how, like explain me the pipeline, how an object detection model is working. And uh, nowadays they do not ask me that, they say like, did you ever use OpenAI API or like did you ever um, train something and implement it in like weights and biases or something? So you, you need some developer skills as well and I think that's really valuable to understand this. So that's why I use this OpenAI API and this is the output of it. However, uh, even though you're not training the transformer yourself, transformers are known for hallucinating. They are a little bit too imaginative so, and since you're not the one training, you're just making an API call and then you're getting the output of it. Since I'm not training it, I cannot handle this case. But I can write rules to stream it to say, for example, um, in here, uh, it says like, in this recipe, you have to use a vase. I don't know what's wrong with vase and transformers, to be honest, like I, I don't have time. I'm too young to go and research that, but, um, it's suggesting me this. <laughs> and at this point, I cannot do something because I'm just using a service, like just using GPT 3.5 to give me some um, output. And the only thing that I can uh, control is what I'm sending to it. Maybe I got, I got this feedback back. Feedback back. I got this back because I sent ways. Uh, <laughs> that could be it. Uh, in here, Again, the model thinks that I detected a refrigerator. Well, well done. Uh, mission failed successfully. Uh, <laughs> so that's not what we were looking for. So maybe in here, when I'm making the API call, I can change that input text and I can say like, if it's not food content and I can create, for example, a list or a dictionary, I can say like, if it's not matching this kind of a context, then do not send it. Um, and it's basically writing a rule. It's not nothing to do about AI. And these are the recommendation edge cases. And uh, let's inspect some user behavior. Um, discussions. So it's never this easy. When I zoom, do you see it? Yes. It's never this easy, like tomato and give me this. But it could be that easy. However, my users decided to give me a hard time and they're like, what about the ingredients I don't keep in the fridge? Well, they have a point and I hate them for that. <laughs> what about the ingredients you don't have in the fridge? So if I was to build the recommendation model myself, that would be a problem because my model, for example, if it's a reward model that I showed you in here, deciding, if it's a reward model, like this content-based filtering, I had to, oop, glad that you don't see that. I had to say that all of the ingredients that the model is not seeing in the fridge would be causing a problem because it would say, oh, I couldn't match them. However, it's not your fault. I didn't give them to you. Um, and, but this could be very easily, like again, you can say, just skip these things. For example, onion and garlic, I don't keep them in the fridge and I can say that. But in this case, since I'm using OpenAI's API, I cannot do anything about this, so I just try to ignore it. Uh, can the program recognize and categorize different food items by their various stages? Actually, this is a very valuable question. Like, I'm, we, we do this to less, uh, waste less food. So it's actually very valuable that recommending recipes for the optimal use uh, and like knowing what kind of uh, things are going bad very, uh, what kind of ingredients are more likely to go bad very easily. So if I was to, again, um, 
write the recommendation model myself, I could easily uh, make a hybrid model that's focused on these cases, and I could say, just recommend in this order. Uh, can the model detect time of the day and suggest the right meal? Uh, this could be, again, a very, uh, you don't even have to do this by touching neither the uh, object detection model or the other recommendation model. You can write rules for this. Uh, and when you are sending the prompt to OpenAI, you can say that it's evening or something, you just give like one parameter with it, so it could be easy. What about chopped ingredients, or what if they are in a container? Well, in this case, I would take your suggestions, because I have no idea. Uh, like, first of all, even as a human, like I cannot recommend you if I don't see what's inside the container. So, again, you can understand that they just try to give me a hard time in this uh, feedbacks. So, but it's a ch if it's a chopped ingredient, I would say it won't be a big trouble. Uh, and the model is, even this model that I didn't specifically train for foods was able to detect and differentiate. The other questions, what if my fridge is too messy? Well, I think that's, that sounds like a you problem. Like uh, I, didn't, I didn't offer you anything like this. So you're telling me you're an adult, you cannot tidy uh, basically a shelf. It's just frozen. So, so fridge is too messy. I don't have an answer for that. It can suggest as much as it wants, but I won't cook. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I don't know what to do about that as well. Like this isn't an AI robot that's going, that's going to cook for you or something. It's just trying to handle the meal planning. So I, before this, my first talk was for PyLadies Ghana and telling them how to create an AI portfolio. Uh, so I tried everything. Like I, I really started from learning all of the base models and uh, back then there weren't like transformers or uh, hugging face or anything. And it was like 2019, it wasn't that long ago. So I had to learn each of these, like Kitty, Coco, all of these different data set formats. I had to create these toy projects that I very much enjoyed, like this bridge project, smile detection or tracking. It's really fun, face recognition itself. And in the talk, like this is a screenshot from that talk, and that talk is again like special to me because I wasn't trying to intimidate anyone, like go learn each of these. Actually, you don't have to, but by the time, it's a nice understanding to know like what is a convolution and what is an RNN, even though we don't use them that much that often anymore. And again, like the common architectures, for example, in this case, I use faster RCNN and like ResNet was merged and I didn't have to go through each of these layers, even when I'm fine tuning. Again, like I build a project to not decide but when I'm fine tuning, even when I'm fine tuning, like I'm not building the project myself, it's pre-trained, I have to decide like uh, the layers, the ReLU, what am I going to use as loss, how am I going to evaluate? So maybe it's nice to first develop projects like this one that I showed you, uh, which is like you're able to showcase to that your friends and you can understand the edge cases even in my job right now it's much more better to understand the user feedback. For example, when I build a project, I do not like think of cases like my fridge is too messy. I don't have to think of that, but it's fun that the, in the job, like they tell you this is the business case, even though, even if I don't find it reasonable, I have to do that ticket. Um, so when you're building these by yourself, it's not easy because it's like theoretical and you're not able to showcase to your friends. And why this, this is why I wanted to do this talk with the streamlit because I can show you like this is how we did it and this is what you're expecting as the answer and stuff. Um, but you can still learn. These, all of these models are uh, valuable and of course they're going to ask you about them if you're going to be specifically an AI researcher or an AI engineer. Uh, but in this one, you can use the APIs and stream it. That's what, that was my point. And that was all of my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sena. If you have any questions, kindly walk up to the microphone and ask it. Thank you.
and we can keep in touch as well. These are my <laughs> addresses. Okay, I have one question for you. Yes. So I'm just curious, what are the next personal projects you are going to work on? Next project, yeah. Uh, maybe I will just try to solve these user feedbacks first. <laughs> Great, looking forward to it. And I didn't do like a, a mobile application before, uh, so maybe we can try to make this into a mobile application. That could be the next steps. Great. Uh, I, can I ask a question? Uh, thanks for your talk. So, Thank you. if you want, if you give the people the and one maybe uh, take away like uh, how how to maintain keep maintaining their personal hobby project. What would your advice? Uh, personal what project, sorry? Uh, just a hobby project. Yeah. How do you keep maintaining that? Uh, what what do you advise us? Yeah. That's great, thank you so much. Um, so usually what I try to do, I try to first start with a version control because when I'm, I'm always building everything monolith, like I'm the worst company that you would imagine. <laughs> so. I don't use like microservices or anything and uh, I would try to understand like these are my inputs and this will be the outcome of it. And then I try to tell myself use the version control, try to do little steps first and later like take everything from backlog but not at once. So that's how I try to maintain it because when you imagine of a project you have so many ideas and like oh I want it like this and that but just have the baseline first and just add features to it. I would do it like that. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, so my question, because it looks like a very nice project, um, I guess would it be extensible, for example, that you scan your uh, fridge or even pantry in, in addition to that and that it would say, <laughs> okay, your favorite meal was that, but go, go shop for that and provide you a shopping list as well, for example? That's great. I actually got that feedback like, uh, can it suggest me what to buy later? Because again, I go to the market, I buy jelly beans, and then I go home, I, I, I cannot cook anything because you only have jelly beans. Like, uh, so, so it would be great. And that would require another recommendation model. We can add that as a future. And uh, again, like uh, trying to keep the track of what you don't have, it, uh, what you have outside of your fridge is just an input text area in Streamlit like this. This is the, what it got, but I can say like, do not send this call to the API before you get all of the list. So that's just, um, I can add that feature like that and I can make a call. I, I don't even need a different transformer. I can make two calls to the GPT 3.5 and I can say like, this time suggest me, these are what I'm eating, what am I going to eat next? And what am I going to shop for that? So I can maybe do that with a recommendation model. Thank you. Thanks a lot.